Hello everyone. Welcome to this video where we are going to talk about big data. There are plenty of opportunities and lots of positive hype around this buzzword big data. So it's really important to understand as what exactly is this? What are the big data problems? What are the opportunities? as well as what are the different technologies involved in the big data solution. Before we go for big data, it's important to understand what makes the data important. What makes the data valuable? If you take the personal examples, scorecards, monthly bills, expenditure, movie ratings, or any, if you go to any e-commerce website, you go for the ratings of the product. That is the data which helps you take some better decision or make some better choices. If you don't have the past or history data available to you, it will be difficult to make an analysis further. Similarly for organizations also, they have their decisions which are driven by the data. We'll take few examples. There is a big bank in the USA and this bank has acquired many small banks in the past. So this bank has got heterogeneous data which is available across different machines, different servers, different sources and then there are diverse nature of data the data is related to the transaction data is related to the loans data is related to the other activities performed by the customers like their service requests a request for any checkbook or request for a debit card like that now one of the segment of data is the loan data this bank wants to make its system such a predictive model that whenever a user applies for a loan, the bank is able to judge whether the user is eligible for the loan or not. Now, if a user took the loan some time back from a different bank and he was unable to pay back the money, then the bank will be very cautious this time whether to give him the loan, a fresh loan or not. Accordingly, if there are multiple users or there are multiple user bases and the bank wants to predict like which user segment or user base should it hit or should it go for the campaign so as to invite them to take loans. The bank has to process large amount of data already stored in its repository. This is one of the challenge. Let's come to one more situation. This time a telecommunication company based in China. This company has got lots of call data, call logs, like different persons make different calls from one person to other person. In it, person who purchases a new plan or any new customer, any person who leaves the network. So it has got lots of data for the telecommunication domain. They also want to understand few things like why are the customers leaving? And what is the reason behind that? Whether it is because of the pricing, whether it's because of the service or because of the competition. If the person is leaving is only trading between the plans or he is genuinely leaving a particular network. So how will this telecommunication company come to this decision unless it has got data and data which comes with its own complexities which we will discover now. Finally, let's take one more example of the point of sale transaction. Whenever we make a transaction, there are different parties involved like the person who makes transaction. Then we have got the reseller who receives the money. 
there is a debit card type of card used there is certain product or category of the product purchased based on these things there can be multiple decisions which can be taken by the bank if the debit card of a particular bank is being used the bank will be able to identify like who is the user in which category he spends the most so bank will be able to give the relevant offer to the user who is the top reseller if some fraudulent activity is detected from the credit card or debit card the bank will be able to notify the person that we have detected some unusual activity from your credit card which is against your usual purchase pattern so unless the bank has the idea of purchase pattern this decision cannot be taken so we come to see that data plays a really very important role but in all these situations there were some common problems one common problem is the size of data is extremely huge the other situation or the other common problem which we have seen is data is split across multiple systems it's not centralized in most of the cases so traditional systems like rdbms they do not scale up to the limit of this particular extent and even if we try to do so it will be extremely costly with the rdbms so our intention is to make a single system that can handle this diversity and volume of data as well as perform different operations of the data in the same infrastructure so basically this is the problem of big data so we conclude like big data is a challenge it's more of a problem and what is the problem it has three core problems the three v's called as volume variety and velocity if we talk about volume these days we are receiving the size of data which is in petabytes or even more which is beyond the capacity of the storage of a single machine we have to process the data and the data which we receive is not usually of the same format it can be structured it can be semi structured or completely unstructured like a flat file and the processing over the data is also diverse sometimes we need a batch processing where we process the data once a day once a week or once in 6 hours something like that but there are also requirements to process the data once it arrives that is the real time processing so we have batch processing real time processing and many more so these three challenges which are beyond the capacity of the traditional systems give rise to the problems of big data and this is what gartner defines that big data is a high volume high velocity and high variety information but Gartner also says that this information has got its challenges, but it is an asset. And it requires cost effective and innovative forms of information processing. But why? Because we want to enhance our insight. We might want to have a better decision making system. So I hope things are better now. You got an idea of what exactly is big data in a crux it's a challenge of three v's recently few more challenges have been added and they include the veracity and value veracity refers to the trustworthiness of data whether the data is valid or not if it is not valid filter it out increase the trustworthiness of the data and finally data is of no use if it cannot be brought into the value you should be able to have some insight some decision from the data which you have that is the value if we try to see the volume of data which has increased in the last few years we will see that the web application data has increased exponentially at a much faster rate than the transactional data the application data refers to 
what has been the behavior on the web application. According to the ex CEO of Google, these days we generate data at an extremely higher rate than we were generating earlier. Like from the beginning of the civilization till 2003, the amount of data which was generated, we generate that scale of data every two days. So that's the massive scale of data which we are producing. Now, we have talked about the problems of big data. If we take a look at what can be the possible solution, there are two ways to solve it. One is by scaling up and one is by scaling out. In scaling up, we increase the configuration of a single machine. Whether it be RAM, whether it be storage capacity or the CPU cores. And if you talk about scaling out, instead of using a single machine, we use multiple machines which, not, which need not to be of high end. If you go by diagram, it may look like something this. In scaling up, we increase the configuration of a single machine. And it's very costly and it's less reliable. There is no duplicate data available unless you explicitly maintain that. And it's a time consuming process to maintain that. On the other hand, the scaling out is quite efficient as compared to scaling up for large amount of data. You use multiple machines and you divide the load when it comes to storage, split the data, store it across multiple machines. Some portion of data will go to one machine, some portion of data will go to the other machine and so on. The advantage of this design is if you want to increase the capacity of a cluster, just add one more machine or multiple more machines depending upon your requirement. So scaling out is something which gives us theoretically infinite storage. But there are challenges with a scaling out as well. Some of the challenges of a scaling out are, first of all, your nodes may fail frequently. Suppose you have got a cluster of 100 machines. Some of the machines can fail because of network issue or machine issue. You have to take care of that failure as well. Like which machine has failed and what to do in case of a failure. Number of nodes may not be constant. You may increase or decrease the number of nodes. You have to take care like how the communication between the, no the nodes take place. For a storage, for the analysis, for the processing. Suppose you are processing data in parallel across multiple machines. So how will they communicate to each other? And when will they communicate to each other? That is something you have to take care of. That is an extended point is during analysis, you have to take results from multiple machines because same file is divided across multiple machines. This gives you an opportunity to do parallel processing, distributed computation, but you also need to collect or merge the result coming from multiple machines together. Finally, we would like to have some infrastructure which is efficient, easy to use and reliable. So scaling out is a solution which we feel, but a scaling out comes with its own set of challenges. And on top of this, you need a solution which can interact with the databases, like relational databases for a structured data. It should also be able to process and handle unstructured data or semi-structured data that can be huge, extremely huge in the volume. Here comes our solution in the form of Hadoop. Hadoop is that framework which performs distributed storage as well as parallel processing. It has got two frameworks, one for the storage and one for the analysis. So this also brings us to the introduction to Hadoop. That Hadoop is first of all an open source programming framework which is based in Java. It gives you 
a reliable and a scalable platform for both storage as well as analysis. For a storage, it has a file system called as Hadoop Distributed File System or HDFS. And for processing, it has got a framework for computation called as MapReduce. So thank you all for watching this. We will discover what is SDFS in the next videos and stay tuned to Attack Guild videos for further updates.